ان الحمد لله نحمده تعالى ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى اله وصحبه اجمعين أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون أما بعد أيها المسلمون A few days ago we witnessed a woman invited to our lands our Muslim country and specifically a country that we are proud of because it is Mahbatul Wahi. It is the place of revelation. It is the place where the most beloved messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam resides today. It is the place that we know as a place of ilm and ulama, knowledge. It is a place where Islam has spread. So this evil woman, Qabbah Allah, she came to Riyadh and she was singing at a concert. And as she was singing with all the profanity and all the things that she was talking about, her clothes, tight clothes, they ripped in front of the mala, in front of the Muslim shabab, exposing herself, making herself semi-naked. And this woman, by the way, is known for even worse things than singing. And so what did she say? This is what I want you to think about today. What is it that she was singing about? It wasn't just about all the filth that they sing about, but it was at this very moment that she stood semi-naked in front of Muslim shabab who are cheering and dancing at her voice and at her words. And she starts to shout down on the same land that walked upon it our forefathers, the Sahaba, the companions of Rasulullah on the same land that their blood was shed to make sure that Tawheed was spread in that land, to make sure that Shirk was abolished from that land. On that same very land, she started to shout out, bow down to a goddess. Bow down to a goddess. This is what we accept. This is what we tolerate today. Is this how weak and low that we've become, that we accept for these people to come and try to challenge Allah in front of our shabab but wallahi i'm not here today to talk about to blame rulers to blame people to blame countries because this is not what we're about yes we call a spade a spade when evil is happening regardless of who's doing it or where it's taking place we will call that evil we will stand out against it because this is the ummah of amr bil ma'roof wa nahi anil munkar we will call towards the good and we will forbid the evil regardless of where it comes from or who it comes from. But I'm not here to say, look at what these people are doing and look at what those people are doing. Wallahi, the problem lies primarily with us. We need to look at ourselves, how we allow this to happen in the first place. If you look at your own children, your own children, you allow them to walk around, you allow them to go to sleep and plugged in their ears are lyrics that you have no idea what's happening. Do you think this is only on the stage or in the concerts? Wallahi, what they are saying in your children's ears are even worse. I ask you by Allah, you have ghira, right? When you hear about what happened, you become upset, right? Of course you should be upset. That is something that we are proud of. We're upset when they try to challenge Allah and they're speaking about Rasulullah and they're speaking about the deen and they're saying all this nonsense. Of course, we naturally have the ghira to hate this. But where is our ghira when our own children have this plugged into their ears? But we want to busy and we want to start saying, look at what's happening over there and look at what's happening over here. I'm not saying that it's not wrong, but I'm saying where, are, where is our ghira then when it comes to our own children, when it comes to our own families, when it comes to our own communities, when it comes to ourselves. And that's why when we start the blame, wallahi, we need to start with me, myself and I. We, know we need to hold ourselves accountable because this is how it's going to change. 
What use is it for me to now start slandering and start attacking all these different people? Yes, they did wrong. Yes, may Allah guide them. Yes, they made us look weak, Wallah. I mean, it made us look humiliated in the same lands that we were proud of, that the Islam was spread by the blood of our forefathers, the Sahaba Radwan And I don't mean by forefathers in lineage, I mean forefathers in what we follow. They are the ones whom we are today proud of to be Muslims because of what they did and how their blood shed on those lands. But I am saying, in order to rectify this situation, we need to start by looking at us. Where is the ghira when our Muslim mothers take their little innocent young daughters to the cinemas to watch this stupid movie called Barbie? And I'm sorry, but wallahi, this is something that is absolutely unacceptable. You take those young minds and you poison them. Wallahi, would you be happy, you mothers that look so carefully to see what food enters the stomach of your children? Would you be, would you be happy now to poison their minds and their hearts? with this filth that they're learning, destroying motherhood at a young age. That's exactly what these movies do. They make motherhood, they make being a, a wife who looks after her husband and her children, looks after the household, the most noble thing for the mother, the most noble act in society is the mother. This is the most beautiful thing in, in our deen. It's not something that is to be looked belittled. And at the very start of this filthy movie, they want to bash all uh, uh, the baby dolls, something that our deen even promotes to let the, the, the child, the, the little girl, let her give her a doll so that she can learn motherhood from a young age, so she, she, can, she can implement the passion that Allah has naturally created inside of her. And now they're telling you to weaponize that and to say, go against what Allah has naturally created in you. And we allow this to happen. Where is our ghira then? Where is our ghira then? Where is our ghira when our shabab are following these crisp rappers? Wallahi, that's what they are, rappers. They are like the crisp and sweet rappers that we see thrown on the streets. Where is our ghira when they follow in their footsteps? And all their concern now is about money and about getting women and about drugs and crime. Where is our ghira then to allow them to go into this nonsense? I ask you by Allah, this, this is where we need to start. This is where we are failing. When it comes to ourselves, we're too busy criticizing others that we don't have time to look at yourself in the mirror and see where you are going wrong. And we don't forbid the evil that's happening right in front of your own eyes, right in your own household, under your own roof. You're too busy looking at other households. Cry over yourself if you want to cry over something. And likewise, it's something that we take honor in. It's something that we are proud of as Muslims. As Allah says, and I've said many, many of times in this, in, in, on this member, Kuntum khayra ummatin ukhrijat lil nas ta'muruna bil ma'roof wa tanhawna anil munkar wa tu'minuna billah. That you are the best of people that have ever been. You, Ummat Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you are the best of ever people to come about. Why? What is the reason that makes you the best of people? Is it your lineage? Is it because you're like Banu Israel, you're a chosen people, that you have a chosen lineage? La wallah, it's because ta'muruna bil ma'roof, you command people to good, you call people to the good. And look how Allah starts off by commanding people to good. Don't go around saying, don't do this, don't do that. Don't be so harsh, but rather call people to good. Show, show them the beauty of Al-Islam. Call them to that which they will love and sit and encourage them, entice them. Tell them about the reward of Allah. Tell them about Al-Jannah. At the same time, you need to forbid them from the evil. Stop them from doing that which is wrong. And have firm faith and belief in Allah. This is what makes us the best of people. And the minute that we turn away from this, then we have turned away from being deserving of being the best of nations. Wallah. We, are not, we are not worthy of being the best of nations if we turn away from this task that Allah has given to us. And if we look at this, this is our deen is a deen of strength, a deen of honor, a deen of izza, of honor, not to be weak and subdued. We don't allow ourselves to be humiliated. Islam is strength, yes, and we're not shy about it. Ya Yahya, khud al kitab bi quwa. Oh Yahya, take the book with, with strength. Khudu ma atainakum bi quwa. How many times do we see this in the Quran? Take your book with strength. Fa khudha bi quwa. Take it with strength. Not with weakness. 
Be mentally strong, be physically strong, be spiritually strong. This is what we need to have in ourselves. We cannot allow ourselves to be weak. We cannot allow ourselves to be humiliated and subdued. And we are only again worthy of being the best of people when we are strong within ourselves. And alhamdulillah, many of our shabab today, we went on a residential, as many of you know. And alhamdulillah, well, one of the things that was pleasing and opened up our chest is how our shabab are proud to be Muslims. Wallahi, we had a young little boy, very young boy. I think he was the youngest on the trip. And he was wearing a top, and I think he's wearing the same top today. And he had some bones on it. He had some bones or like a, a figure of a skeleton. Young boy. And one of the instructors, he said, oh, I bet you like enjoying uh, with this top, you go for Halloween and you must enjoy going for Halloween. I kept quiet and I looked and wallahi, you know, my chest expanded when I heard the response of this young boy. He said, I'm a Muslim. He said, I'm a Muslim. I don't celebrate Halloween. I said, Alhamdulillah. Wallahi, I know adults, fully grown men that go to the gym and probably can lift a few men themselves. But wallahi, they'd be embarrassed to say something like this. And that woman, she was quiet. She didn't even know how to respond. Because this young little boy, Young little boy, he stood up and he said, I'm a Muslim. I don't celebrate Halloween. And Wallahi al -Azim, the izzah that I felt from this young boy, I was astonished. Wallahi, I was astonished. This is the izzah that we want from our shabab. That they're not shy. And he said it with so much innocence and adab. He didn't say it in a way to be harsh and say, oh, like, you know, to be like arrogant. He said it so innocently, but at the same time, firm. But with kamal al adab. Just reminding me of how the Muslim is. He is strong, yes. He is firm in what he believes, yes. But at the same time, he has complete adab. He has complete manners because that person doesn't know any better. And I want you to remind you that what happens if we fail in our, in our commandment? And I want to remind you that it's not enough for us to not to be quiet. We can't be silent as Muslims. We have to take a stance. As Allah says about Banu Israel, when they, when they did the, the, uh, the act on, on their Sabbath and they, they, they disobeyed Allah, the people who didn't get involved in that ma'asiyah, in, in, that, in that disobedience, they were of two groups. One of them was the ones that came out and spoke against them and said, stop what you're doing. And they reminded them to fear Allah. And the other group, they said, وَإِذْ قَالَتْ أُمَّةٌ مِّنْهُمْ لِمَ تَعِذُونَ قَوْمًا إِلَّهُ مُهْلِكُهُمْ أَوْ مُعَذِّبُهُمْ عَذَابًا شَدِيدًا they said to the people that are warning them, why do you bother? Why do you bother going and try to correct the people whom Allah has going to destroy? Allah is going to completely destroy them. Why do you bother even lecturing them? You know that they're wrong. They know that they're wrong. Why do you bother? Look at their response. They said, so that we are free from the blame of Allah on Yawm Al-Qiyamah. That when we stand in front of Allah, we hold ourselves accountable. And we said, Ya Allah, we tried. Ya Allah, we tried. We tried to correct them. We tried to remember. And then, وَلَعَلَّهُمْ يَتَّقُونَ So maybe they come back to Allah. Maybe that they come back and they seek forgiveness. This is how we are. And subhanAllah, in one of the, in a, in the one of, some of the Mufassireen, they said when the adab came, it included those that were silent. Those that were silent, they were included in the punishment because they didn't, they didn't stunt. They didn't make a stunt. They might have not got involved in the evil, but they were too scared and they were too weak-minded that they didn't want to speak out against the evil when it was happening right in front of them. And this is why Allah says in the Quran, وَاتَّقُوا فِتْنَةً لَا تُصِيبَنَّ الَّذِينَ ظَلَمُوا مِنْكُمْ خَاصَّةً That be fearful, be wary and be, be afraid of the punishment of Allah that will not come down only on those who do the wrong, but it will come down on all of you. So be afraid of, of and how can we be afraid? How can we have taqwa of this adab? In when we do our part and we stop the evil where we can, and we speak out against the evil where we can, and we're not shy and embarrassed to speak our stance as Muslims. We're not shy and embarrassed when somebody's clearly going against our religion that we speak up in the best of manners. Whether that be needed to be harsh or whether it's time to be soft and kind, we are ready to stand up and, and protect our religion. And this is why if we do not do this, then you have to fear. You have to fear what is coming. As Rasulullah said, 
فلم يغيروه أو شك أن يعمهم الله بعقابه that the people when they see evil taking place and they don't want to change that they don't try to even change anything of that then it is it's feared that the adab or that the punishment of Allah will include them as well and that's why what does Allah say after the end of this ayah and no believers the ones who believe in Allah the ones who believe that Allah is the most merciful know that Allah is also the most severe in punishment know that Allah is the most powerful and nobody can stand up against his punishment many of us may have even seen what happened in Mecca last week and wallah it was terrifying it was frightful scenes seeing the thunder storms and the rain and the wind that was coming and if you felt fear in your hearts when you've seen this in our most blessed place Mecca if you felt fear in your hearts then know that this is from taqwa Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam the best of all mankind who knew where he's going to be on Yom Al-Qiyamah. We don't know where we're going to be. When the wind came from Allah, a strong wind, never mind thunder, never mind thunderstorms or lightning, just the wind, he would, his face would change. His face would change out of fear that an adab is going to come down. And he is Rasulullah. So where are we? Where are we? أَفَأَمِنَ مَكْرَ اللَّهِ وَأَفَأَمِنَ أَهْلُ الْقُرَىٰ أَنْ يَأْتِيَهُمْ بَأْسُنَا بَيَاتَ وَهُمْ نَائِمُونَ Wallahi, this is scary, my brothers. Do the people of the street, do the people of the village, do the people of that society, do they think that they are safe from the power and the punishment of Allah when it comes down? Do you think that they're safe? Do you think that you're safe from the planning of Allah? Only the losers, only the losers are the ones who feel safe from the planning of Allah. And this is why the believer, he feels his obligation because he fears the punishment of Allah and he is concerned for his people. He's concerned for his people more than they are concerned for themselves. And this is why we are constantly reminded in the Quran. We're constantly reminded in the Quran to fulfill our duty towards our people. Just like the Anbiya, Wallahi, the Anbiya, the prophets and the messengers, they cared more for the people than how parents care for children. The parent will care for the child in his youth. Make sure the child is fed. Make sure he has a roof over his head. Make sure he's safe. Make sure he's protected. The Anbiya had that concern for them in the Akhirah where the life is forever. This is the greatest concern that you can have. And this is the concern that we should have following our fathers, following our leaders, the Anbiya, and those who came after him from the Sahaba and the righteous people. أَقُولُ قَوْلِ هَذَا وَاسْتَغْفِرُ اللَّهَ لِي وَلَكُمْ وَلِسَائِرِ الْمُسْلِمِينَ فَاسْتَغْفِرُوهُ إِنَّهُ هُوَ الْغَفُورُ الرَّحِيمُ الحمد لله وحده والصلاة والسلام على من لا نبي بعده At the same time, my brothers, we need to have balance in our lives. And many of the times what happens is those of us that are practicing, those of us that have that zeal for following the religion and for ensuring that our communities are following the Islam and our families and our communities and our friends, we sometimes get looked at this feeling of you're sanctimonious or you're self-righteous. You think that you're better than others. You are judging others. But there's a fine line. It's how we deal with people. This is what is important. We do not judge the people. We do not condemn people. As Rasulullah said, Man qala halaka al halaka al qawm fa huwa ahlakahum. That whoever says the people are destroyed and finished, he is the one that is destroyed and finished. Or he is the one that has destroyed them and finished them off. Rather, we do so out of concern for the people. When you want to advise your brother, advise him in a way that you would want to be advised. Advise him in a way because you want what's good for him. You don't want to expose him. You want to hold him by his hand and tell him. Whether that be in a harsh way so that he fears Allah, whether it be in a soft way so that he listens to you, you need to know what is best for your brother. And how will he turn to the haqq? How will he come? How will he stop this sin? This is the balance of the believer. And at the same time, hold yourself constantly accountable. The problem that we have, again, it's this nature of criticizing others and forgetting about yourself. That do you go and command the people and tell them about good and do this and stay away from that, but you forget about yourselves while you are the people who recite the book. 
Do you not think? Do you not think about what you're doing? يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا لِمَا تَقُولُونَ مَا لَا تَفْعَلُونَ كَبُرَ مَقْتًا عِنْدَ اللَّهِ أَنْ تَقُولُوا مَا لَا تَفْعَلُونَ Oh, you who believe, how is it that you say that which you don't do yourselves? It is so evil with Allah and so great with Allah that you do that which you do not, that you say that which you do not do yourselves. Always hold yourself to accountable. This is what will, this is what will make you the best in, in commanding the good and forbidding the evil. Because you're constantly holding yourself to account. You're constantly thinking about yourself. You don't look at others and when you see people doing wrong, you always think about yourself as well. But that does not stop you. That does not stop you from doing, fulfilling your duty that when you see the wrong, you, you forbid that evil. Even if you have mistakes yourself, go and forbid that evil because if we all had that mindset, who would go and correct the evil? Who would go and correct the wrongs? And this is why the believer constantly holds himself Accountable. فَلَا تُزَكُّوا أَنفُسَكُمْ وَأَعْلَمُوا بِمَنِ اتَّقَى How beautiful is that Allah has laid it out for us. Don't praise yourselves. Don't go around saying, Oh look, I stopped, I, I helped this person come to Islam and I stopped this person from doing this and I, I did this and I did that. Always, always remember that Allah is the one who knows who has taqwa. Allah is the one who can decide who is the best of us. And when you have this mindset, then you are humbled in front of Allah. And if you look at the people of Jannah, Subhanallah, look, Allah told us what were the people of Jannah are going to say. Remind yourself of this ayah. When you think about people, when you see, when you go on the street today and you see that drug dealer. Wallahi, I want you to think about this ayah today. When you go out on the street and you see that woman who is selling her body. When you see those things that Allah has guided you and, and has tested them with. وَقَالُوا الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ الَّذِي هَدَانَا لِهَذَا وَمَا كُنَّا لِنَهْتَدِيَ لَوْ لَا أَنْ هَدَانَ الله. They say, Alhamdulillah, Allah is the one that guided us. Not me, not me myself, but Allah is the one that guided me. And had it not been for the guidance of Allah, then I would have never been guided. So always remember that when you see that evil happening place, don't think that it's your virtue, your fadl that makes you better than that person. Wallah, you are not better than anyone. Only Allah knows. And remember, Alhamdulillah, Allah saved me from that evil. Alhamdulillah, Allah saved me from that evil, didn't test me with that. Let me help my brother. Let me help my sister so that Allah can save them from that evil as well. Wallahi, when we have this mindset, then we have the most pure mindset and, and we can change people's lives for khair. And Allah will definitely hold our scales and, 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 and give us those good deeds when we are true with our intention for what we truly want for the people. هذا وصلي وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم وبارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم عز الإسلام والمسلمين وذل الشرك والمشركين ودمر أعداء الدين ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار وقوموا إلى صلاتكم يرحمكم الله